Hello folks, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add slaves to your Jenkins master. Let us say you have a Jenkins master and it is not able to handle all the workloads or you find that you want to work, run some certain jobs in another machine, then you need a Jenkins slave to run those jobs. So in today's video, let us go ahead and see how you can add multiple jobs and how you can label them and make sure certain jobs run on certain slave nodes only. So here we are in the GitHub article where I have documented all the steps that are required. The first thing is we need a Jenkins master running. If not, go ahead and watch my previous video where I have shown you how you can get your Jenkins master running. And next thing is uh, we need a Linux instance which has Java as well as support 8080 open so the Jenkins can connect to it and also port 22 also because the slave and the master is going to communicate over port 22. And remember that uh, slave node also requires Java version 1.8 so that Jenkins can communicate with it as well. So if I take you to my uh, EC2 instance uh, dashboards here, I have two servers. One is uh, performing the function of a Jenkins master and then I have another instance which is performing the function of a Jenkins slave. So let us go ahead and see what we need to do in the Jenkins itself. So if you go to Jenkins and then if you go to the manage Jenkins section, under manage Jenkins you will have an option called as manage nodes. So when you come to the section you can see here there is already a slave configured so I'm going to show you how you can add one more slave. So the first thing is let us go ahead and click on new node and it is going to ask you what is the name of this node going to be. I'm going to say slave-02 and I'm just going to say this is going to be a permanent node not a just a temporary one so click on OK. Now it is going to ask you some information, for example, what is the description you want to give? So I'm just going to say slave for Java jobs. This is what my Java uh, slave node is going to run all the Java jobs. And how many executors I need? I'm going to say 10. That means that 10 different jobs can run at any single point in time on this slave node. And what is going to be my, my root directory? So I'm just going to say it is going to be my home. And I'm going to create another user called as Jenkins slave-01. This is going to be my username and under this home directory I want Jenkins to store all the workspace files and the build artifacts and everything. So what label I want to give for this node. Since I want to run Java jobs I'm going to call this uh, label as Java. You can give anything like Chrome or web browser testing or front end testing and all those kind of things. So next thing is I would like to know uh, use this node as much as possible and remember we are going to use uh, SSH to connect to this node. So the, for the host name, what we are going to do is we are going to pick the slave nodes IP, private IP address. We don't want to communicate with public IP address. So I'm going to copy the private IP address and put in here. And so we need to configure some uh, user ID. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me just go ahead and clean up my uh, credentials. So before configuring the credentials, we need to do a couple of activities on our server itself. So all the steps that are required to configure on the server has been documented here. So let us go ahead and log into our slave. For logging in, I'm going to use the public IP address, uh, but remember Jenkins and the slave are going to communicate in the private one. So these are the steps. What we are basically doing is we are going to create an user and we are going to create a public key and the private key so that the Jenkins master can know that this is the prior slave and this is the ID and you can communicate with it. So if you are logged in as root, all you have to do is go ahead and run these commands on the slave node. So here I am in my slave node. You can see here Java has been already installed. I'm just going to create the user home directory and then I'm just going to copy the uh, public key and I'm making sure the public key is copied to authorized key so that the, when Jenkins master is trying to communicate with the slave, and the slave knows that it is using one of the authorized keys. So we are done with the configuration on the slave node and the next configuration is on the master node itself. So what we are going to tell in the master node is we are going to say uh, the slave node is available on this particular IP address. Go ahead and grab the public uh, key so that uh, the master node can communicate with it. So you see here this is the command to run my master node uh, to update the key. So you will have to update your slave nodes IP address here. So let us go to this directory. You might have your Jenkins installed in different home directory. Make sure you change these values based on your home directory. And this typically is in your Jenkins home directories. I mean Jenkins users home directory. So for me it is in slash var lib. So I'm just going to go in there. 
So let us go to that directory and then the command is something like ssh hyphen key scan and followed by the option to scan the ID and we are going to update this into the file called as known host. So once we do that, we also change the permissions because we ran this commands over uh, root users. So we're just going to change the permissions of this file to Jenkins user. And we also want to make sure that only Jenkins can uh, access this file and nobody else can access this file. So this way we have secured the files. If you see here, we have known host which is owned by Jenkins and only Jenkins user can modify this. So we are done with the settings on the master user also. So all you have to do is go back to our slave and we might have to copy some keys now. So before doing that, let us go to our Jenkins dashboard. So here on our Jenkins dashboard, we need to configure our credentials. So click on add, click on Jenkins. Let us go ahead and add our global credentials. So go ahead and choose. We are going to use an SSH username and private key. And here we are going to use the user ID that we just now created on the slave. So Remember the user ID I used is Jenkins slave hyphen zero one. I'm just going to save the same thing. And then we are going to connect it with an SSH private key. So choose this option, enter directly. And this private key is available on your slave server. So go to our slave server and run this command something like more ID underscore RSA and you should be able to get the entire key there. I have just resized my screen so that um, I can copy the entire thing in one flow. So paste everything here, click on add, then we can go ahead and select it here. So since we remember we added the host key also into our master server, we don't have to change anything, click on save. That is all we need to do right here. And right now you see here my slave is showing a small X mark. So let us go ahead and see what is happening. Let us click on this one and uh, you can see here right now it's already installed and we are able to see the status of this agent saying this agent is available and uh, we can run some jobs here because we have done the key configuration properly and the slave is already reporting to our um, jenkins master server if i go to my log status you can see here agent successfully connected and online so you can go ahead and review this information you can see here ssh key matches in the host file connection is allowed and it is gone ahead and installed the agent and configured it. So if you want to run a job particularly on this uh, particular node, all you have to do is let us go ahead and create a second project. Say test slave 02. I'm just going to choose a freestyle project. So quickly we can go ahead and execute a job. So test slave 2, this is where the interesting part is. Restrict where these projects can be run. So here I'm going to say Java. You can see here Jenkins has already picked up that saying Java label is serviced by one node. So if you have more than one slave uh, servicing this label, then it will show up here. So all you have to do is just go ahead. I'm just going to sim execute a simple shell command here. And I already pre-written the command also. I'm just going to copy paste this entire command here. So basically it should, uh, if it ex everything executes fine, we should be able to see a successful message here. I'm just going to click on build now so that my whether my build is successful or not, let us go ahead and see. It's executing now in the background. Let us go ahead and see the console output now. So here we go. And here you see here, the, my build has been successful and it is uh, finished and it shows me the output that we pasted in here. If we even go back to our server, here, if we go to the home directory of this user, we should be able to see a directory which has been created in the workspace. So you can see here the test slave project has been created and it has been used as a workspace for running. So that is how you create a slave and run jobs on that particular slave. If you have any doubts or queries on doing this, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'll be happy to help them with you. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.